So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by a soon-to-debut heavyweight hope, Johnny Fisher. Johnny, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Dan. Um, I had a good bit of training today and I'm just relaxing now. Got some sparring tomorrow. It must seem like you've waited a while for this to happen. You signed with S Jam in August, I think it was, linked up with Mark Tibbs ahead of the pro debut and with the pandemic and so on. You've had to wait until February the 20th it's going to be for your pro debut. How have you kind of filled that time? And has it been hard to kind of keep a lid on the excitement? Yeah, well, it's, in, in a way, it's been a blessing because I've had more time to gel with Mark. And I know I've not got the, uh, the an abundance of amateur experience. So it's been good to gel with Mark, get used to the pro style. And it's been brilliant. It's been a great journey. I've been to Furt Ventura and Billy Joe's camp. And it's just given me more time to learn from Billy Joe and the other boxers and, and Mark himself. And what was that like going over there, being part of like a world championship training camp, warm weather training as well, Billy Joe. People criticise him in terms of outside his camps, but when he gets in the gym, everyone knows that he trains incredibly hard. He does train very, very hard, and it was a completely professional woman who was in there. Me and the James Hawley and Charlie Duffield and Harvey Orm, we had our own our own place with Steve Andrews, and then Billy was in his own villa, and we, we all trained. We had set times every day, and I loved it. I loved that routine. And it really gave me a bug for getting in a training camp. That's what I want to be doing in a year or two years' time. I want to be having my own training camps and really uh, knuckling down. You first came to prominence and caught the eye of Sam Jones when you had those sparring sessions with Joe Joyce, of course. Who have you been sparring since then? So between kind of August and heading up to your pro debut? Yeah, so I've done a few rounds with Joe again for uh, when we were preparing for the Dubois fight. I sparred a lot with Fabio as well. We've done a few rounds of sparring Fabio this week, Fabio Wardley. So Huey Fury is another one in Cash Alley. I've been sparring some good top 10 British level professionals. So I've been getting some great experience. Huey Fury particularly must have been great sparring for you because I think everyone rates you. You're strong, you're tough, you've got a big punch. But in almost every person who's praised you in press release and so on have said, you're raw. That seems to be the yeah. word that's following you around at the moment. And Huey Fury is a very tricky operator, so that must have been a, a real development spot for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm happy that people understand that I'm raw as well because they know that there's, there's a journey and there's a process in place. So when I went and sparred Huey, it was really good because he's a very, as you said, he's meticulous, he's, he's very well calculated, and to learn off Peter Fury as well, what a man he is to go up there and to, he gave me some good time, and, uh, good time and good attention, and Savannah Marshall was up there as well. And it was good to, to, to gel with all them as well. It was a brilliant experience for me. So it was good to spark Huey. Very awkward and, and long and rangy. And it te teaches me to improve my temperament as well. And outside of your own camp, because we know how um, esteemed Mark Tibbs is, of course. But outside of that, when you speak to people like Peter Fury, Joe Joyce, of course, as well, and, and other people you've sparred or worked with, what is their main feedback to you? What are the themes that you get? Mark uh, says a lot about, I'm very eager, so I want to train here. I'm always pestering him. Can I train here? Can I do this? Can I do that? And what I'm slowly starting to learn is boxing is not just about going 100 miles an hour. It's about listening to the body and preparing well and, uh, and managing your workload. And I'm slowly getting that and what that means. And it's helping me in the way I fight as well, being more relaxed, not charging in like a, like a lunatic and, and just using my, wet, my sheer power and strength. It's about boxing's an art at the end of the day. It's not just a science. So... It's good that I'm, I'm learning to keep that control. You've obviously, as we said, you've got your debut February the 20th on the undercard of Josh Kelly, David Avanesian for the European title. It's a big show. How thrilled are you and excited as it comes up to be making your debut on a big matchroom Sky Sports show? It's a few months ago, I couldn't have dreamed of being signed with S-Jam and matchroom boxing. It's a, it's a dream come true. And I've been I've worked very hard, but I've been given a great opportunity and I'm, I'm looking to pay... Pay that opportunity back to Sam, to Adam Morley, to Eddie Hearn for all giving me, giving me a great opportunity. So it's a dream come true. How do you feel about the kind of matchmaking side for you? Because as we've said, you're quite raw. You didn't have the longest amateur career. But the flip side is you want to be in fights where you're going to learn. You don't just want to be knocking everyone over for the first five to ten fights. Yeah, so my first opponent, Matt Gordon, who's who's sort of, he's been about for a few uh, debut fights um, for people on their debuts. So I think that's a good fair and a good a good matchup for me because he can he can have a go back and he's strong and he's tough and he's durable. And anyone who gets in at heavyweight is, is, has got a bit about them and has, has got something that I've got to break down. So it'll be a good test and then we can judge from there how fast and how, or how slow I need to be progressed. And we talked about the sparring before. Huey Fury, someone who's fought at world level, you know, fought very closely for a world title at one point as well. Still young, of course. 
Fabio Wardley, someone who's English title level looking at the British this year. What did those spars with him tell you about where you are and how far you've got to go to get to that top domestic level? Yeah, so I was sparring with Fabio when we were sparring um, for Joe's camp. It was all mixing in and it was good. Fabio's obviously got great movement and he's a great, he's a, he's a great man as well. He's given me good advice. So for me to get in there and spar well with him and give a good account of myself in front of everyone who was there, it was really good. And we've got some more rounds and that will help me progress. He's obviously that level above me, English champion, moving on to British level. And he's got a big fight in Eric Molina and I wish him all the best. And hopefully we can get some more rounds in and progress each other even further. Yeah, I mean, you, Joe, Fabio, you're three of the more kind of educated, articulate boxers on the scene at the moment with your university degrees, of course, as well. Yours is history, yeah. isn't it? History, yeah. Yeah. Joe. I, wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say I'm articulate and intelligent. I just about make my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't get a university <laughs> degree by being as thick as two short planks, I can tell you that. Except if you're me, maybe. But any anyone else, I, I respect that hugely. But more to the point, you guys all kind of mix in together. You, you share training camps and so on. What's that like? Because you're, like I say, you are all intelligent. Are you kind of giving each other advice about your careers? Do you discuss all that sort of stuff? Or is it just purely sparring? Well, when I was in when I was in camp with Joe in Vegas, it was good to just watch him and see how he, how he handles it. What he does is he'd spar and then he just boxing he just switches off completely he plays his video games and just we went to the vr in a to play the video reality game in the mgm grand it's just like boxing was when we we're in the gym and then when we we're out the gym it was like we're not even here for boxing we're just relaxing and keeping ourselves sensible and i think that's the best way to be and that is a good way to make sure you have a long and, and prosperous career because if you focus on boxing the whole the whole of your life then it's a very stressful environment you've got to learn to have that switch off and we all love boxing but there's a time and a place for it, and that's the best way to be. With that in mind, what, what do you like to get up to outside the ring? Are you a big gamer like Joe is, or, or have you got other hobbies? Uh, I'm not a massive gamer, to be honest with you. I like watching a few programmes on the telly. I've, I've been watching a load of Fools and Horses, over, or watching them all again over, over Christmas. They're always good. Uh, I love eating. That's the main thing I do. I love eating food. I've got a nutrition board, PRP performance. And I've just been stuffing my face full of meat. What I used to do is my job was selling meat. So I've always got an abundance of food to eat. So I live a simple life, really. I, I box, I eat, and I watch a bit of telly. And I live I live the life you're meant to live if you're a professional athlete. Great stuff. And the Romford ball, was that uh, Sam Jones' uh, brainwave? Uh, yeah. Uh, Sam Jones was saying the Romford raging ball, but I thought let's just keep it at the Romford ball because then we can, uh, then we can, we've got a good fan base where I'm in Romford. And I think my dad came up with it as well. He put it on a poll on Twitter and people thought it was quite a popular name and um, it's, it's stuck and people like it and it resonates with a lot of people. And I'm proud of where I'm from uh, in Romford and all the people around Essex, but um, I've got a good support network and this is where we're going, we're building from here. How frustrated, if you like, are you that the fans, you like say, you've built up a big fan base in Romford, that they won't be able to come and watch the, the first fight, at least? It is frustrating. It is, for every, especially for not so much for me, because at least I still get to get in there and get a job done and, 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 and go to work. But for people at home, they want to really come and support, and I, I really want them there because I, I feed off the crowd. I had good crowds when I was down at university, boxing in the amateurs there, and I want to feed off that energy again. But... The time will come and everything happens for a reason. And I think it's going to be quite beneficial for me, these first few fights, if they are behind closed doors. It gives me more time to communicate with Mark and I can hear everything. And it would be a, a good introduction into the program if, program, if you understand what I'm saying. And we talked about how close yourself and Joe are. Um, how thrilled were you, especially being part of the camp leading up to it with his victory over Daniel Dubois? Listen, we always knew it was going to be a tough fight and we made no, no bones about it, Sam and Adam, uh, especially we all said that. But when he got the victory, I was so, I was over the moon. Me and my dad were watching it in the living room, my whole family, and we just we were overjoyed. But I've got to give massive credit to Daniel Dubois because if he had something wrong with his eye and he's carried on like that for three, four rounds and it's in, in damage, he's shown he's got, he's got a lot of heart. And when I first initially saw it, I thought that, that's, not a good, that's not a good sign seeing him go down like that. But... I watched it back and I thought, hang on, and I, I go a few days to process it. He's got the heart of a lion to do that and he deserves a lot of respect and I think he'll come back strong. He's, he's an unbelievable power puncher and I think he's got a, a very, very bright future. Is he someone, obviously, I know he was on the GB squad, but he had very few senior amateur fights. 
kind of got the raw materials, very athletic, and he's got to a, a very good level. Is he someone you look to as a bit of a template, perhaps? Oh, yeah, listen, he's, if I can achieve what Daniel Dubois has even achieved up to this day, I'll be a very happy man. The aim is to get to the top of the division, but he's, he's, he's achieved a lot. And he's to fight Joe Joyce and, and get all them knockouts that he got under his belt. He's beat Nathan Gorman as well. I know under circumstances, Nathan Gorman probably said he wasn't at his best, but he can mix it with, with good, level, good level fighters. Another one, Fabio is another one I look at, who's, who only had four white collar fights. Mm. So it can be done. I've, I watched this thing the other day on, um, on Sky Sports. Um, it was like a behind the gloves and Lennox Lewis was on it. Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, it's from a few years back. And Lennox Lewis said, um, when you turn professional, even if you're a really top high level amateur, you've got to empty the cup and you've got to start again. And that's, that's similar for me, but I'm not emptying a cup. I'm just starting. It's like I'm on an apprenticeship and I'm going through and I'm learning as I go. People talk about learning on the job, but I'm, I'm truly really learning on the job. And that's not a bad way to do it sometimes. Well, yeah, in a way, it's better than emptying the cup because there aren't kind of not necessarily bad habits, but habits that aren't suitable for the pro game that you have to unravel. Yeah, exactly. And listening to Mark Tibbs, who's obviously been there a hundred times before, and his dad, the knowledge that he can draw on from him, I'm in the best place to just to learn a blueprint of how to be a good, strong, solid heavyweight. And Billy Joe Saunders and, and others in camp as well, who are very experienced. Learn off all of them. Harvey Horn, Charlie Duffield, John Hedges, is another one who's, who's at a similar stage to me, a young man. We can look up to these guys. Well, literally, he's taller than you, isn't he? Despite being a super middleweight, he's enormous. Yeah, he's about the same height, probably a little, maybe a touch taller. He's six foot five as well, so he's, he's tall. He's tall and he's got a lot of good tools that uh, that Mark's refining now, like he did with me, and he's still doing with me. So it's exciting to see where John Edges can go as well. Great stuff. Well, before I let you go, we've done this before, but it's always worth adding new people to the fan base. How can everyone yeah. find you on social media to join the Rockford Bulls journey? So my uh, Instagram is Johnny Fisher one and my Twitter is Johnny Fisher Box or Johnny Fisher Boxing. And I'll just say a big shout out to all my sponsors, my day one sponsors, MKA Recruit, I've got uh, the Steel Team, Odor Essex, Gimme Golf, Versa Former, uh, Essex Fire Services, Essex Thermal Services, um, Show Fumi Travel. And I don't think I've missed anyone off, but I just want to say a big thank you to all my sponsors because they've really helped me out. Origin Health and Fitness, VIP HQ Essex. I'm really enjoying all, uh, the journey and they've been a big part of it. What's your secret? How have you got so many sponsors? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I've just, I've got, as, as I said, where I'm from, people get behind you and I've got great people and I've got good friends and I've got uh, my family get on well with a lot of people and we've got good, good friends and people who want to support us as well. So listen, I can't, I can't thank them enough for all the help that they've given me and I will repay it. I promise. Great stuff. Well, mate, I'm looking forward to watching the debut February the 20th. Hope all goes well for the rest of the camp and uh, yeah, we'll be watching on, on that day. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Anytime, mate. You're always welcome. Speak no, soon. Thanks a lot. Bye -bye. That was good. I'll speak to you. All Take the best. care.